Mary Catherine Ham. Mary Catherine, good to see you. And it's your first time on The Bottom Line. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. So uh, glad to be here. Uh, so what do you make uh, of, of, uh, of Kamala Harris's new uh, task of <laughs> leading gun violence for, for President Joe Biden? Give us your take. Well, the first, the first thing I would say is duck. <laughs> because anything that she's in charge of is bound to get worse. Like, that's just what we've learned so far. And the thing is, look, she has a lot of topics on her plate, but she's not actually doing a lot because she's not good at doing things, which is the reason that they keep having to reboot her with new topics because she couldn't handle the border. She, Lord, uh, The AI thing, we're definitely going to be living under Skynet in no time if she's in charge. And now we've got gun violence. Mostly, I think, what they're trying to do is give her things to talk about, perhaps with young voters, perhaps with women voters on the trail. The problem is she's also not good at talking about things. So <laughs> we have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> talking about anything. Speaking of yeah. talking incessantly, California Congresswoman and U.S. Senate candidate, Democrat Katie Porter, her run for office isn't looking too great as she strives for equality. How could a push for equality fail? Well, here's what she told the Washington Post about a particular female senator from Iowa. Quote, to me, equality is not electing Joni Ernst. Like, that's not helping. Uh, way to stand up for another woman, Mary Catherine. No, I mean, this is a very flippant take. It's a jerk move. And look, her, her honest take is that this competent female veteran who is now in the Senate, doesn't count. She doesn't count as a woman, and she doesn't count as a woman because she has different views on, like, tax policy. Because I think capitalism is great, uh, I don't count as a woman, to Katie Porter. But look, she also has a pattern of this, right? Uh, there's this Washington Post profile of her that's quite glowing that um, doesn't mention the treatment that she gave a female veteran uh, fellow of hers who she apparently dismissed and sort of abused over text after the employee got COVID, and then she blamed her for giving it to Katie Porter and, and got rid of her and had her stuff sent out of the office. Like, she has a reputation for, do, for, for sending these nasty texts, for treating people badly in her office. And the interesting thing about this is the Washington Post in doing this profile doesn't actually run down those allegations and decide whether they're true or not. What it does instead is a think piece about whether people are too mean to women bosses. Mm. And I'm like, maybe we could actually deal with the facts of this, uh, since apparently uh, certain women don't count to Katie Porter. If she wants to run for the Senate of California, if she wants to be a national figure, she should have to answer some questions about that treatment. No doubt she should. And by the way, I served with her in financial services in Congress. Uh, she is crazy. Uh, she's a radical leftist, but she is incredibly smart. I have to give her that. She would she would stump more witnesses than almost anyone on the committee. So uh, you should watch out for her. I will Crazy. say I will say she also Go ahead. she's also great in the attention economy. She knows exactly how to get the camera on her and to get yep. coverage. And you're right, she can get she in, she can incisively explain sort of complicated things and get to the root of them and, appe and appeal to regular voters. Yeah, the attention economy. I love that her and Fetterman. <laughs> So we country. can put them in the <laughs> in the same little uh, little yeah. mug. We'll put them in the same little mug. There we go. Mary Catherine Ham, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. You're the best. Hopefully, first of many. Good to see you guys. Good to see you.